Well, my name is Maria Fernanda González Olivo, but the people know me as Mafer Bandola. In my family, we are around 22 Marias, so the people have to make short the Maria Fernanda and create the Ma Fer. And Bandola is what the people used to um, use as my last name, just because I play Bandola Llanera, a traditional instrument from Venezuela. I play first cuatro, which was a, is the traditional instrument from Venezuela. And, but when I start, the teacher said that there was no more space to play that instrument, but they had bandola. So we have so many bandolas available in that room. So she can choose, she can pick whatever she wants, but we don't have any more cuatros here. So I play the bandola and somehow I said, the bandola found me because I wasn't looking for, for that instrument. So when I start, I realize that I it was normally or generally played by men. All my part my colleagues in this in the room were men. I wasn't able to be the perfect player for this instrument because I remember once I asked them, "Hey, I want to play that song the way that you play it. Can you teach me how you do it that way?" They were laughing and say, "Hey, you know what?" you never are going to be able to play that way because to play this instrument the way that should be played, you have to be a man. I was like, why? So uh, that, that was shocking for me. Like, hey, I love this instrument. I wanted to play this instrument, but I won't be able to play just because of my, because I'm a woman. Then I asked my dad and my mom, they were like, you know what? Let's understand about this. I'm going to take some coffee Um, I'm going to prepare, like, this is water, this is coffee, this is sugar. I'm going to add those two cubes of sugar. I'm going to add two spoons of, of, of coffee. I'm going to add blah, blah, blah. And my mom repeat the same recipe. And then they both give me to try, like, try this one and try this one. How is the flavor? I was like, the same. That's right. And then that's mean that If you have the same tools and same way, you could do the same. And I was like, okay. But they have, they have something important that they actually teach you today. It was like, what? That they actually write that you are really different than them. They, and, and that's okay. That is something that you have to learn. That that's okay to be different. And you never are going to play like them. Of course, you don't eat the way that they eat. You don't live with the pattern that they live. You don't listen to the music that they listen to. You don't. You don't have the same bandola. You don't buy the same string for the bandola. So of course, it's going to be different, but doesn't mean that you will be less or more than them. So that a, a child was eight years old changed the whole perspective for future challenge. Um, and I think that's something that was really important for me. And until now is one of the rules that I follow about What does that mean that because it's, I'm a woman, I won't be able to do something? It wasn't until 2014 that I traveled for the first time to the United States um, to a residency, an artistic residency that I met three incredible musicians from three different countries, Brazil, Colombia, and the United States. They were masters in the instrument that they were playing. I loved it and then I said, Wow, well, I would love to invite you to my neighborhood in Marquisimeto and play in the street. I have my room and probably we could like rent some mattress and you stay with me there and we play in the street. And then I think that's cool. And they were like, what? <laughs> like Venezuela, your, your room, your neighborhood? Like, what is that? So that was the beginning of the idea, just because it's really normal for girls in my community to be pregnant at the age of 16, 17. So I said, it's about music. So if we play, they come, they ask, and we tell them possibilities. We talk to them about what we are living here. And one of the things that I remember, the brother of one of the most dangerous gangster in my neighborhood, he was seven years old, and his brother, it was a really dangerous guy in, in prison. He was just eight years old and he was always like, ah, like about to fight, about to 
always like sabotage the class or whatever. But when he saw Lara, the drum player from Brazil, my friend, she was playing and smiling and asking and rapping with him and hugging him and let's take a photo here, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, wow. And then this kid that I knew a lot and my bands didn't, they didn't know who was him, but I remember his face when we asked them, okay, guys, let us know what you learned from this workshop or what you liked, what was the most incredible moment for you? And then this one said, I realized that I could sing so I won't be like my brother. So my band was like, oh, cool. But to me, it was like, oh, like that was his hero before my band came to that neighborhood. That was his hero. I have to be like him, that powerful, that danger, that anger person. And then he said, Lara, I want to sing and I want to play like you as a drummer. I want to be a drummer. So that was for me. Okay, there is something about about music just by being there. So there is some communities that actually you go there to play and they will be attracted by the outfit that we are wearing, let's say. And they will talk about the outfit the whole day. And that's okay. That's some way that you understand, okay, there is about the visual aspects. So, but when you ask them about what was the different, the first song and the second song, do you feel any different, like in between the rhythm or we changed any instrument? Did we, did... no, it was the same. And we actually changed the whole setup sometimes. So um, I think there is, a, uh, there is a space to teach how to listen to stuff. And as band, when we are doing workshop, there's some of the stuff that we do in the workshop. So we start by listening to our bodies creating rhythm and sound in the body. Because if you are able to feel, touch yourself and listen to, probably will be easy to listen to the context, to the external areas. So I've been really influenced by poetry, by, by rhythm. I felt at the beginning really connected with tradition of South America. But just as, as, as I start to travel, I found myself following female musicians um, as a way that I could uh, raise my personality or my identity uh, inspired by them. I have a project, uh, it's an international conference of female, the name of the conference is Latinica, which means Latinas in la industria de la música, like, uh, Latin, the uh, female Latin in the music industry. That actually is going to start the 8th of March. It's going to be one week. And the idea of this is about understanding or recentering the experience of Latin, female, uh, female Latin artists in the music industry, because there is something um, that people assume that we are okay, or we understand, or, or everything is fixed, or we um, have the same salary, and it's not. Um, is going to be the first online conference for Latin female artists. And with my band, I hope to be on tour again. We are trying to compose again to see each other, to be able to have residencies together again. And But I, I, I have a really strong feeling um, talking about my solo projects. I have to record something. I don't have my solo project yet. Um, but, and I, I also wanted to go to Venezuela with a project for communities in there.